Good evening, good morning, whatever time it happens to be in your time of the world. This is Jeffrey and Linda Hoppy, and we're here for yet another wonderful experience with Global Teleclass. I think this is about our fifth or sixth time here on Global Teleclass. I'm here tonight with my darling wife, Linda. How are you tonight, Linda? Hey, I'm great. I just got this this different phone to work perfectly, so I'm in heaven. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, we're, we're not in our usual um, office environment right now. We're actually at a hotel trying to make the phones work here, and that's always a little bit of a technical challenge, calling in, doing everything. But you but know what? Good. It feels good to be here. It mm-hmm. feels really good to be here. And really, before we get this evening started, I want to thank all the listeners for being here tonight and also to let you know that we are recording this session and it will be available on our website we'll give you those details in just a few minutes but in case you missed part of it or in case you just want to listen to it again we will have it available on our website I also want to take a moment and thank Hilton Johnson and the whole staff at Global Teleclass. They produce dozens and dozens of wonderful episodes every month featuring some of the best uh, top speakers in the world of uh, business, health, personal development. And it's really an honor for Linda and I to be part of the lineup on Global Teleclass. Uh, the capability to reach a worldwide audience and just have an hour of chatting. So. We do have an hour tonight. We're going to want to get into the materials right away. Tonight, we're going to be talking about Spirit Rising. Kind of a provocative title, I guess, but something And a timely title. A very timely title, but something that applies to all of us. But a couple of announcements. And Linda, do you want to handle these? Yes. Uh, By the way, if you would like to, if you're listening, it would be fun if you would go ahead and send an email to speak.angels at gmail.com. That's speak.angels at gmail.com. And what's really fun for us is if you would put in the subject matter where you're from. That's really amazing and a a fun thing for us to see where you're from. What's more is towards the end, we actually will open it up for questions, and you should also put in there that you have a question if you do, because we will try to handle some questions towards the end of the show, correct? Uh, Absolutely, and and by sending us an email, it does a couple things. We don't have a switchboard um, to look at to see, you know, the number of callers. We we actually don't even know if this is working. We, We might just be talking to ourselves right now. Actually, I can already tell you that's not true because oh, someone good. from Italy and New Zealand has already Ooh. logged in. So okay. we, somebody's hearing us. Good. Yeah. So okay. yeah, it helps when you send that email in to speak.angels at gmail.com Correct. Uh, with uh, where you're from in, in the title, uh, in the subject uh, header. But also, if you have a question, we're going to take about 15 minutes at the end of the show just to address uh, the listener questions. And you guys are really cute. Like I said, they're already logging in where they're listening from. So that's fun for us. Thank you so much. Well, you know, it's a huge relief for me because I never know when I push these buttons that these numbers and codes that they give me to get into the, Mm -hmm. um, you know, this switchboard here, I never know if it's really working. So I am so relieved right now. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. And then also our website, if you'd like to see more information, is www.crimsoncircle, that's C R I M. S O N C I R C L E dot com. And because we really enjoy doing this and like to like to offer you more and and uh, another way to to reach to more information we have a free offer you can go online at crimsoncircle.com and we will uh, give you the creator series by Tobias this is probably one of my favorite pieces Jeff it, I know you channeled it's one of your favorite pieces but this is great and profound insights into our journey here on earth and that's again at www.crimsoncircle.com backslash free. It's at www.crimsoncircle.com forward slash free. Oh, I'm sorry. That no is problem. Forward, it's it? one of those slashy things. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the, this is a compilation of messages given to us by Tobias um, back, I think it was about 10 years ago, but it's become a real classic. They're profound messages. This is about a 200-page book, uh, which you can download now in a PDF format 
totally free of charge, but we like to do it just in case you're interested in the materials. If you're not familiar with Linda and I or the Crimson Circle, this kind of gives you a, a taste of it at no charge. The Creator Series is one of my favorites because it has real tools for real life, and I found that really a wonderful way to uh, integrate more of this spirit into my life with those tools. Absolutely. So we're going to repeat this information towards the end of the show about uh, the website and, and the offer, but we just wanted to start out by giving that to you right now. Now, let's get into the subject matter tonight because okay. uh, actually we could talk for days, weeks, but we won't. or a long time. <laughs> We've got about one hour, so we'll get right into it. All right. All right. Let's all take a good deep breath together, bringing our energies together as we talk about spirit rising. Well, Spirit Rising is, has to do with this year that we're in right now, 2012. And I think as most of you know, you've heard a lot about it on television, maybe even seen the movie 2012, and have certainly you've heard about the, the uh, prophecies that, that have been given for a long time, including Nostradamus, uh, a lot of other prophets and psychics have been talking about this year. The Bibles and the, the Christian end of the world, so to speak. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, it's all uh, there. And, and, of course, the one most of us are familiar with, 2012, was the end of the Mayan calendar, specifically on December 21st, 2012, which is at the end of the year. It's also the date of the win winter solstice. So there's been a lot of discussion, a lot of drama, and a lot of a lot of predictions surrounding 2012 about what's going to happen. People are saying, is it the end of the world or the beginning of a new world? Well, we're going to find out on December 22nd, 2012. I know what I'm hoping for. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, uh, Linda and, and listeners, I, I know people that are kind of in a, a fear mode, if you want to call it that, but they're literally out... Um, uh, you know, doing things, uh, oh, how do I say it, gently. They're, they're, they're figuring it's going to be the end of the world or there's going to be global war or global uh, weather catastrophes. And, and they're entrenching themselves, literally, uh, you know, buying these modules that go underground. or They um, sense change, but... It's, but it, they are expressing it in a fearful way because the uncertainty is very fearful for some. Well, I saw a report the other day on the news where you can literally buy a place in one of these old missile silos somewhere Seriously? like in, in uh, Nebraska or someplace like that. Seriously? Deep, deep, deep underground, and it's already stocked with food. They're ready wow. to go just for a couple hundred thousand dollars. Oh, seriously? Uh, seriously. I did not see that. But, you know, some people... Either believe it or they, they really feel into all this stuff going on. And I, I got to tell you, even this afternoon, well, we got done with a series of business meetings. I had just a little bit of free time and I felt this sudden kind of anxiety. And, and I knew right away it wasn't mine. I, mm. I had no reason to feel anxious about anything. I mean, life is good. We had some great meetings with good friends of ours planning, you know, what we're going to be doing the rest of the year. But I got, I got hit by it almost like mm. it was, um, Oh, it, it was it was very strange feeling, almost like a ghost energy that suddenly just came over me. And I knew it wasn't, this energy wasn't trying to do anything to me personally, mm -hmm. but I would just felt it. And, you know, it took a little while to get myself really stabilized again. I had to remind myself that it's not about me. Right. I mean, again, uh, you know, I have a wonderful life. I'm with you, Linda. Oh, um, baby. I get to travel around the world <laughs> meeting some amazing, incredible people. And we do have it. Yeah. So I, I had to do a little breathing, a little centering, and uh, some things that I'm going to mention later in this program to get us balanced. But there is a lot of this feeling out there, and I know many of you have felt it not knowing what it is and now a lot of people interpret it um, in, in very different ways but interpret it as the possible end of the world uh, conflict oh, yeah, yeah. breaking out you know I, th I think if you look back there there was uh, we, we had some examples in the past the whole thing with the millennium scare uh, was, absolutely comparable yeah yeah that was very related to computer software mm -hmm. and you know what what was going to happen if the calendars and dates weren't set right on those but we had that whole kind of scare epidemic uh, you know about 10 years ago 11 years ago right there was another one back at the uh, harmonic concordance back in i believe and i apologize i should have looked this up in advance but i think it was uh, um 1987 and, and there's been others throughout history 
This, I would have to say, though, with 2012 is probably one of the biggest and most impactful of any of those. Mm -hmm. and, and again, a lot of people are saying, is it the end of the world or is it the beginning of a new world? Well, I think it's actually a little bit of both. It's the end of the world as we have known it. It's the beginning of a whole new world. What that's going to look like, where it's going to go, I, th I think it's up. Well, it's literally up to all of us. It's what which potentials we choose for it. Mm -hmm. I think the Mayans, when they were doing their calendars, either they just ran out of space on their big round stones and they just couldn't write in any more years, or actually, uh, more sincerely, I think they projected into the future uh, they did astral journeying or, or time travel into the future they were following kind of an energetic path <laughs> that they were comfortable with and they got to a certain point and suddenly they saw nothing more and uh, you know it was like blank right because they were still looking at it through the perception or through the eyes of their time their energy and their consciousness and when you get to a point like this here in 2012, where there is such a big change and shift in consciousness, uh, that the eyes of the past really can't see it. It, it. Does that make any sense? Absolutely. Oh, good, good. So, so that's why so often, um, kind of along the same line, so often psychics will read energy. All they're doing is reading potentials. Uh, but if the if they're not attuned to higher frequency potentials of you, they're just not going to see it and they're not going to report it or talk about it. They're actually going to be more attracted to the closer in potentials and those with the highest uh, drama, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so here we are in 2012. It's been talked about for thousands and thousands of years. Nostradamus talked about it. Many others have. So here we are. We're kind of right in the middle of it. You can't say, you know, any more, well, you know, it's coming up sometime in the future. It's it's here right now. Absolutely here. And I, well, and I just still, you know, there's no coincidence that everybody's feeling uncomfortable because change can be uncomfortable. And it's not uncommon that when you feel that much of a change, that it's easy to be fearful or nervous or uncomfortable. It, 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 it's not a surprise. And I think it's indicative of potential. It's just what kind of potential do people feel? Absolutely, and here, here's kind of my take on on this year. And I and I have to admit that uh, you know it's just it's my opinion, certainly, uh, and I get it partly from the messages that have come through um, Adama Saint Germain, who mm -hmm. who I channel, who I you know bring in, uh, through Tobias, who I used to channel until he reincarnated back into physical form. And I, I have a I have a funny feeling, uh, you know, Tobias reincarnated back uh, on the planet back in July. 2009. Well, if he thought it was the end of the world, I don't think he would have reincarnated. Oh, yeah, good so, point. Yeah, good point. Mm. Padoom, one for Jeffrey. <laughs> um, and and but this has also been um, validated, or the information also given by entities that that and channelers. I have a lot of respect for people like Lee Carroll, uh, Steve Rother, um, Lee Harris, and and others that we've worked with. And you know. Uh, Linda, you probably noticed that with the with the other messengers we work with, there tends to be kind of a, a general consensus about what what's going to happen, at least or what is happening. Right. Uh, they they don't really go into fear scenarios. No. None of them are saying it's the end of the world. Uh, they're all. Well, you're right, and they don't say the end of the world, but no one denies that there is clearly change. Okay, uh, and I, I agree. You, you, I think we all concur, yeah. uh, and I think all the listeners would probably concur. Something is happening. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so that, that's an excellent point. Something is happening. Uh, but the ones we work with that are bringing in angelic guidance uh, from, from various entities pretty much concur that they, you know, it's not the end of the world. But that there is something happening now. Adama Saint Germain, the the one that Linda and I work with, and and the Crimson Circle people work with the most, basically is saying that this is going to be a very intense year. Exactly. And not that last year wasn't, <laughs> or the year before, but he's saying it's going to be even more intense from a from a global perspective. Mm -hmm. He's saying that this right now, what we're in right now is the greatest shift of consciousness 
in the history of humanity. The greatest shift of consciousness in the history of humanity. It's pretty stunning. It's pretty stunning. And I know when this has been brought up before, some people will say, well, yeah, you know, if this is such a great shift in consciousness, why do we still have wars? Why do we still have starvation? Why do we still have uh, evil on the planet? But what generally happens during a shift, and especially during an unprecedented shift like this, it brings up the issues. It, 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 first of all, literally brings it up so that we can see it. It's on television. The, these imbalances are brought to our attention so that we can truly understand what's going on on the planet and within ourselves. So right now we're, we're seeing things that have been hidden for a long time uh, through our media, through the internet. Yeah. It's exposing a lot of, a lot of this right now. And, and quite frankly, there still is a lot of imbalance on the planet that but i think we're working through it i think as it comes up as we identify it and as we develop and implement our new consciousness on this planet it's going to um heal and remedy those very things right i found that even how how we where we're at and how people see where each of us is at has an incredible influence on people now more than ever that people people see how are you living how are you how are you with this absolutely and, and this uh, new level of consciousness I, I don't want to call it a vibration uh, because consciousness goes beyond that consciousness basically is awareness mm -hmm. uh, and awareness on all levels not just what you perceive through your physical senses but awareness on a spiritual level awareness on a very deep uh, metaphysical level awareness of the uh, the uh, interconnectivity of things mm -hmm. uh, but yet the awareness of your own spiritual sovereignty uh, basically saying you expand the vision you expand the picture we as humans tend to get very focused uh, on our 3d on our material environment and that's actually been a good thing it's been part of our journey but now we're starting to release that focus uh, relax that focus and now develop new levels of awareness and consciousness and, and we're doing it we're you know i'm sure the listeners probably most of them nodding their head when they're saying you're starting to perceive things about yourself that you never did before and it's it's not just that you're getting older and smarter which you are but you're also having this rise of consciousness within you a broader spectrum of awareness Absolutely. So I'm just uh, pausing for effect to let that soak in a little bit. Um, so, so we have to allow it, I think, more than anything, and that's that's what I think. When we get fearful or when when um, there are challenges, it's a lot more about stepping back and allow it than it is forcing it. Sure, yeah, absolutely. And you know, those who are going to hide underground, or, you know, literally, figuratively, uh, in 2012, they're literally trying to shut down their consciousness. Those who take a good, deep, fearless breath and open their arms to the skies, you know, symbolizing opening to all that is and all that they are, uh, well, you're going to have a totally different effect. You're going you're gonna to suddenly have a greater realization. Well, let, let me continue with some of the physics here. So a huge shift in consciousness, it's because we've called for it as a human race. You've called for it within your own life. So then it comes when you allow, like, like you said, Linda, you allow this right. uh, awareness and more levels, then, then it will come. Well, with that, when the consciousness rises and opens up, it literally calls in energy. Now, Adamus talks about this. He goes through diagrams on the whiteboard and that, but he said, consciousness attracts energy. We are consciousness. You, you listeners, are consciousness. You are a spiritual being in a physical form, but at your core, you are pure consciousness. Well, when your consciousness here in this physical reality opens up, it literally calls forth energy. According to Adamus, energy sits in kind of a, a huge neutral reservoir and not in any one particular place in the universe i mean it's all over but it's sitting in this field uh, uh, uh this pool of potentials 
and it's in a neutral state. It's it's kind of dormant. That's why scientists really don't see it right now. You know, when they look through their telescopes or microscopes or whatever, they, they only see what has been energized and materialized. Right. But Adama says there's this huge field of potential, nearly unlimited, more potential energy than you could possibly imagine. So, you know, take plenty. There's There's plenty to go around. It is activated, it is brought into um, action when we make choices, when we open our consciousness. That attracts energy. That energy flows into our life on what he calls uh, beams of light, not literal light, but uh, kind of like um, waves of, of light. And the energy then... then um, how would you say it? It magnetizes, or po- I'm sorry, polarizes itself either to negative or positive. It doesn't mean good or bad. It just means um, negative, positive, like the e- electricity has an ne- attraction. An attraction, and it organizes itself with the appropriate amount of negative or positive, or I guess you would call it light or dark particles in it, to absolutely serve you to bring forth. Uh, experiences and resources that are consistent with your consciousness. So it is coming in very literal. A lot of times people say, well, why did this happen to me? Or why did that happen to me? Well, your consciousness, not your mind, but your consciousness is attracting that. And it comes in in the appropriate levels of energy as well. It comes in in the appropriate balance or skew and the appropriate volume. So what's happening now as global consciousness is opening, but specifically more as your consciousness is opening up, you can bring in greater levels of energy with uh, the uh, a polarization or a kind of a melding of the particles to absolutely serve what you're choosing. It's incredible support. Yeah. And now, this energy is, is making its way to the planet and, and, uh, or is in the planet and coming to you and coming to humanity in a variety of different ways. According to Adamus, it's coming to us through things like the solar flares. I think if you've been watching some of the science news, you realize that there's, there's huge solar flares uh, that, that are happening right now on the sun responding to our consciousness. Now, it's, uh, what's, what's literally happening there, the sun isn't um, uh, some sort of entity. Well, it is an entity, but the, the, the sun is the mechanism that's used to bring forth things like electromagnetic waves, um, gamma waves, and you know, a variety of other things with, uh, that have the physical attributes. Uh, basically, taking these incoming energies, helping to process them, and helping to uh, transmit them or deliver them to Earth, because the, the sun is one of the greatest deliverers of energy to this planet. But yet, the, the primary energies, the raw energies, were coming in from the interdimensional forms. The sun is just helping to kind of process them. It's like, um, it would like the um, um, transmitter on the, on the electrical poles. Man, you're tuned in. Well, I got a little help tonight. Yeah, I can feel that. <laughs> These energies are also coming mm-hmm. in from cosmic waves, especially the waves that have physical properties that we're used to using here on Earth. Again, things like uh, a pol- polarity, mm-hmm. um, electric and magnetic qualities, and a variety of other things. I don't want to go science tonight. but So we've got energy coming in from the solar flares, from cosmic waves, we also have a tremendous amount of energy coming in from releases of stuck energy in the earth itself, in this planet, in the right. ground, deep into the ground. Now, it's, there's a variety of different ways that this energy has been stored, and I'm not talking about things like oil. I'm talking about more um, refined or sophisticated energies. Well, right, right. a long time ago, when Earth was seeded with life force energy, when the first angels uh, kind of came here and started um, sprinkling this, this what used to be a rock with true life force energies, there was also crystalline energies that were planted in the Earth. 
According to Tobias, actually, at the core of the Earth, there's still a huge crystal. Where science right now tells us it's like molten lava or whatever, he says, uh, well, yeah, there's some of that down there, but there's really this huge, huge crystal in the core of the Earth itself. Then there was crystals that were planted all across the world in certain patterns, in uh, types of grids and, and meridians following ley lines and things like that to literally balance this planet to make it uh, a inhabitable by by life, by the animal kingdom, plant kingdom, and eventually the human kingdom. These energies of the crystals in the earth uh, were used particularly by the Atlanteans. That was one of their energy sources. It's also been used to stabilize and hold in the electromagnetic and other energies of the earth that we use to create our 3D reality. The primary energies from these crystals was basically used a long time ago. As we became more comfortable with existing in this physical reality, we didn't need the energy from those crystals so much anymore. So they kind of like flared out. But there still is potential held in these crystals. That is a different type of energy than what was used by the Atlanteans or used for the original seeding of Earth. And this potential of the crystals is now starting to come up from the Earth itself. Mm. So not only are we getting incoming energies from the, um, from the universe itself, we're getting energies that are in the Earth. Now there's another type of energy that's in the Earth, uh, kind of a, a little different one, has a different feeling to it. <laughs> and as I, as I speak here, maybe some of you can actually feel into it. Well, a long time ago, humans got into this habit of burying people in the ground, um, you know, mm. digging six, six feet under. Not sounds good to me. Yeah. And, and, well, you know, a lot of cultures actually used to burn the dead. Uh, there was a lot of elaborate ceremonies, you know, returning it back to right. its, its core. But then at some point, they started burying humans in the earth. So you got a lot of bones down there. Mm. Well, it is also energy. So when some, let's say somebody dies, they're buried in the ground, uh, most of their spirit essence, most of their spirit energy actually crosses over into the other realms. They go back on the other side. But a part of them, even if it's a small part, a part of them stays because they were buried in the ground. So they're still connected and attached to earth and to physical reality and even to their previous incarnations via the bones in the ground. Now, according to the entities that we communicate with, they say these um, ghosts of, of the earth, uh, the old bones, they're releasing the last vestiges of their energies. Ah. Now, you have eras uh, of humanity, eons of time. You can imagine all the bones in the ground. doesn't mean every one of them is going to get released this year, but there is a process that started. In a way, that's really good because the entities uh, can recollect themselves. They don't have, no longer do they have to have parts of themselves buried in the ground or scattered across the universe. They're starting to recollect themselves. But we're feeling this energy, all of us, uh, of the the dead rising. Now, they're not going to they're not going to try to interfere with us. They're they're seeking to go back to them themselves to their soul. But we're going to feel that energy as it passes through. We're going to feel the effect, and particularly if there's still wounds or sorrows or other things like that. So just another form of energy coming through. Yes. There's going to be releases, other form of releases from the earth. The just pure energy that was stored there, not, not necessarily from the crystals or old dead bodies, but in the earth itself that were stored there, to be used at the appropriate time when these incoming energies from the galactic forms and the angelic realms and the sun and these other things was making it its way. It needed a type of balancing form. So there was energies that were stored in the earth that are coming up as well to kind of greet these new cosmic um, interdimensional energies that are coming in. You're on a roll here. Hey, I'm having fun. And, <laughs> and uh, well, you know, actually, I'll pause for just a minute. I, I do a lot of channeling, as, as you know, and you do it with me, dear. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> and, you know, I spend a lot of time in channel, which I, I, I absolutely love. 
But, you know, it's really wonderful also to speak in my own voice now. I have to admit I feel Adamus, St. Germain, lingering around. Uh, but I feel him kind of like... Um, he's offering. He's just offering you support. I can hear that it's you and, and you're yeah, getting yes, some yes. validation. That's yes. awesome. Yeah, so he's not... He's not telling me what to say. He's not coaching me. He's sitting there going, it's about time. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the way I know that he's there is uh, when, when there's that type of consciousness in the room, you know, um, surrounding me, I see these little um, bright, what I call blue dots. It's just a, a sudden little burst of energy. And, and, ah. it, and it doesn't stay, you know, or at least the moment that I look at it, it seems to disappear. But it, it's, it's consciousness that... that we're seeing, and I know a lot of you listening in tonight also see those little dots, a little bright flash of light off, off to the side. Well, that's, that's generally consciousness uh, or an entity hanging around. So do you see any? Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So now we've talked about it. Consciousness uh, is expanding. This calls in new levels of energy. The energy is here. It's making its way in, and it is a lot of it's already here. So this is truly the time, the most amazing, unbelievable time for any person on the spiritual path, any person uh, seeking to get off the old karmic um, cycle, the old reincarnation cycle, Anybody seeking to integrate with their I am, where this would be their physical body, their mind, and their spirit. On earth, in this physical reality, this is a perfect time. Can I just add one thing to that? You can add what, five things. What I really, really think that so many of us are enjoying about this time is up until not so long ago, and in and, and other disciplines or whatever you want to label it, there so often is the reverse of this sort of n not respecting the humanist, trying to escape it, trying to deny it, and that it's not perfect enough. And what I'm finding so glorious about this time is it's quite the reverse, that now it's the time to truly love and honor and bring the soul to this human experience, that the human experience is special. Absolutely. And it's such a change from even what I, what I used to experience, you know, 10, 20 years ago. Well, and, and, and actually, uh, I'll use the word ascension. Um, a lot of people use that. Uh, and I used to have kind of um, um, an idea of what ascension was. I mm -hmm. thought it would be well, kind of like the, you know, suddenly, uh, you know, I've evaporated into thin air and, and uh, go off into some other dimension mention all perfect and, and clean and everything. And uh, I've learned that true ascension is the ability to be here in, in our human form, right. in our human identity, invite our soul, our, our soul self, mm -hmm. our divinity to join us here. You know, it sounds, well, I don't want to say easy, but it it's, it's such a different perspective. It's a different perspective. It has so much, we have so much more respect for us and our soul when we do that. But, you know, in order to do so, it requires, uh, first of all, having some awareness that it can be done. Secondly, mm -hmm. a love of self and a love of life itself. Of course, yes. And to be able to bring the divinity to our soul self, our, our I am presence into our everyday life, e even into the mundane things, you know, taking a shower in the morning, having a cup of coffee. These are great experiences for the, for the soul self. It's never had these. It's, it's been re removed. Now it can come in and feel what it's like to have a few body aches and pains, feel what it's like to see a glorious sunset, feel what it's like to have a meal, to, to lay in bed, mm. uh, you know, especially with somebody else that you love, mm. uh, to, to, and it's the invitation to the soul self to join us in this reality. That, that's what I've truly come to understand Ascension right. as. I agree. Well, now is the, really the best time ever to do this. The energy. We are, are there. worthy to do it. Oh yeah, we are worthy, and and why not? You know, it's a lot of fun. But what happens as our, as our soul, uh, which by the way, um, Adamus defines this soul. I'm gonna try to remember. He defines it as our, the wisdom. He defines it as our potentials that have haven't yet been realized. He defines it as our awareness. He says, that's the soul, our wisdom, 
our awareness and our potentials. I like that WAP. So imagine in, inviting your wisdom into, into your life, inviting all of the potentials of what you could experience into your life, and inviting a new level of awareness. So what happens as, as you give this invitation, it's then supported by all these tremendous energies around, and literally it starts rising up through your body, through your mind, into your everyday life. And when I say rising up, literally you can start feeling it in your body. You can start feeling the difference even in your own thinking patterns, your own level of awareness, and your own perspective of life itself. So um, this is similar in some ways to Kundalini, but Kundalini rising, which generally for those of you who understand that, the Kundalini was life force energy rising up through your spine. And this is similar, but it doesn't just rise in your spine, it rises in your DNA, rises in every cell and molecule in your body. It doesn't follow just a specific path along your spine. It literally opens up every one of your chakras and merges them together into one. It literally opens up the vibra- the, the, the um, oh, energy levels of your body and your mind and brings them together in one into what Adamus calls the body of consciousness. That's the, the house or that's the, uh, the, the I am-ness that integrates body, mind, spirit all into one, all into this reality. Jeff, what would you say is the the real, um, what's the most important thing we can do to really allow this to happen? Well, there's a number of things. Uh, and actually, let me get to that. I'm, I'm trying to kind of follow a train of thought here, but but that's an excellent question. And, and that being said, I'll kind of hurry through the, these. Uh, a, a you few do not other. need to hurry through it. I just I, I no, no, it's, uh, really feel that. Sure. Uh, okay, now you got these huge levels of energy coming to the planet or from the planet right now. A couple of th- points that, that I wanted to make. You're going to feel it in your body. And there's going to be days where it literally causes some aching in your body because there's such new levels of energy coming from the outside that uh, it's going to, any imbalances you have in your body, you're going to feel it. Maybe you're going to get sore knees, uh, uh, maybe aches and pains in in your neck, or suddenly uh, you even develop allergies you didn't have before. It's because there's new levels of energy. And and I'll talk in a moment about things you can do to kind of help soothe it. You are definitely going to feel it in your emotional balance. You know, we all kind of walk around with a certain level of emotional balance, some more, some less. Uh, but you're going to feel it uh, emotionally in your being. Like like I mentioned, I felt this anxiety today. Mm-hmm. And I knew it wasn't mine, but yet I felt mm-hmm. it. So it's a good point here to say, anytime you get these these feelings of emotional imbalance, stop for a moment. Are they really yours? Or are you just sensing something in this changing world around? Ah. Uh-huh. These unprecedented unprecedented levels of energy are going to affect your sleep, your sleep patterns. You know, maybe you're used to going to bed at eight thirty or ten thirty and getting up at six thirty. Well, that's going to change, and and that's really a challenge, Jeff. You know, when when we talk to people, people that we know that are even very familiar with this and aware, it's amazing sometimes how quickly we'll take this on as ours instead of allowing that maybe it's something else you know it's more than just us well and and absolutely and and but there's also confusion when we've talked to people about Mm -hmm. this before is they well how do i know what's mine Mm -hmm. and what's not well what you choose what you choose is yours what you don't choose is not Mm. and they say well yeah but isn't this just an old you know memory or you know something coming from the past and it's like well then don't choose it and it's really truly no longer yours so it comes down to a question, what do you choose? Now, your sleep is going to be affected. You may be waking up in the middle of the night or getting tired at certain times during the day. It's a part, it's your body, mind, spirit readjusting to these levels of energy. And don't freak out about it. Uh, just accept that there's this natural process going on and it's going to affect your sleep. You're going to have some weird dreams because there's more energy coming into your dreams than ever before. So they're going to get intense and kind of weird. <laughs> mm-hmm. You ever have that happen? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
We uh, both have. Yeah, we both have, yeah. Um, and actually, I'm learning to kind of enjoy these that really, wow, amazing, intense dreams at night. But some of them are too freaky. Well, they're too freaky, but, but there's something happening in them. In other words, yeah. don't just discount them. There's really something happening, and that's probably a whole other show we'll do sometime. Okay, there's going to be days when you feel you just can't catch your breath. Things are happening so fast uh, in the world around you. And you're just going to feel like, oh, my God, you know, I, did, I can't catch my breath. It's going too fast. Well, uh, those are the days when then well, I'll, I'll give some, some tips uh, later on as we get into this. But uh, I just want people to understand these things that are happening, uh, there's a reason for them. Mm -hmm. You're definitely going to have high agitation and high irritation days. Just when you thought you were supposed to be this peaceful, loving, soothing kind of uh, you know, spiritual being, you're suddenly going to get more and more agitated and irritated. Little things like, you know, what one of my pet peeves is, is uh, <laughs> when people make a lot of noise when they're eating. Well, normally I can just kind of overlook that, but lately it's been driving me nuts. That must be why I've really been enjoying eating little baby carrots a lot. Oh, yeah, baby carrots, <laughs> chips. How about, well, you should stick to yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of my strange little pet peeves or... Um, no, yeah. sensitivity is what it really is. Sensitivity. And so you're going to have feelings of increased agitation and irritation. Don't be hard on yourself. There's just so much energy coming in right now that it's, it's provoking these things. Mm. I just want to let people know that yeah, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not going crazy. But just imagine this, this, this tidal wave of energy coming in, and it's coming right at you, and it's there mm -hmm. to serve you. Okay, and then finally, there's going to be some days you feel like you're just going to burst. <laughs> and uh, I mean, because there is so much coming in, building up, changing, shifting, you're just going to feel like you're going to burst. Right. Ever have one of those, dear? Oh, all too often, but you know, I'm getting better and better about finding finding a, a more clear space, a more now space. Yeah, okay. Globally, uh, and I'll brush through these because everybody listening, I'm sure, knows that there's going to be a lot more conflict this year. The, hmm. uh, earth changes such as um, earth, earthquakes, volcanoes, tornadoes, storms, and according to Adamas, things that uh, earth changes that involve water. Last year it was fires, a lot of fires, fires cleansing. Water is clearing away. So we're going to see a lot of water-type earth changes this year. Mm. And then, of course, here's another one of those does. We're going to have continued political and financial turmoil. turmoil. Master of the obvious. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and a way to kind of also summarize, no, I think it's funny, a way to summarize the, uh, what's, what's happening this year also on a global level uh, is what has been hidden must come up this mm. year. Uh, this year and going into the uh, next couple of years, but a lot of hidden suppressed things, secrets, uh, things that were hidden for a long time, literally things that were buried in the ground hmm. start to come up, secrets and things. We're going to we're gonna really see a rash of those this summer. Uh, I mean, it's going to be drama central with like, oh my God, this has been hidden for a long time. Mm -hmm. And in this summer, particularly because, uh, particularly as we get more, heat and warmer temperatures in, in the northern hemisphere, a lot of the old things uh, that, that were buried are going to come up. Whoops. Yeah, I know. It'd be interesting. It'd be interesting. Whoops. Okay. The good news. Ta -da. There is more available energy for you, dear listener, than ever before. More than ever before. You know how in the past sometimes you just felt there wasn't a lot of energy. It's like, where is it? No, this year, more than ever before. You can use it to clear old stuck issues within yourself. You can use it to let go of a lot of hang-ups, a lot of issues, a lot of stuck energy that's in your body, that's in your mind, a lot of old burdened belief systems, fears, uh, what we call aspects. It's This energy will come and help clear them. And the best is you can use this energy for new creations. For projects, uh, for business, uh, maybe your dreams, uh, you know, for let's say you've dreamt of traveling around the world and always wondered, well, how are you ever going to create it? Well, there is energy out there for that right now. This is, a uh, matter of fact, um, you know, this isn't new. Tobias talked about it a number of years ago. He, he said that 
don't hide right now. And even, and he said, somebody was asking him a question about the world economy and, you know, kind of a fear scenario thing. And he said, oh my God, the best time to start a new business is right now, even though the stock market is down and, you know, housing is terrible and unemployment. He said, that's absolutely the best time to start something new. And he said that there's tremendous energy out there. So truly potential. This this is the year for it. And here's a few tips now. Okay, first of all, these are these are things I found particularly helpful. Okay, and, and I'm just gonna go through these. I'm excited about them. Okay, light exercise. Light exercise. Now, I'm not talking about going to the gym and being a sweat nut and you know try working out every day. I'm talking about doing some stretching, going for a light walk. Um, Take the dog out for the walk. If you don't have a dog, get one. Take it for a walk. (laughs) But light exercise. And why do you think that is, Linda? Uh, To assist in moving the energy and and allowing it to flow through your body more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because... It works for me. (laughs) And and you know, when you exercise, it also brings in more energy in a very palatable or or soothing Mm -hmm. kind of way. So it releases stuck energy, some junk that's been hanging around for a while. It gets you breathing. Absolutely. See, light exercise gets you breathing. So that releases. And, and, and Well, you become more conscious of your breath if you're actually exerting and, 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 and moving in a different way. And you become more conscious of your body, too. Absolutely. And, you know, it also, there's a um, kind of a chemical effect that takes place in the mind. There's a release of endorphins. Absolutely. And I know some people that are endorphin junkies <laughs> because the endorphins uh, really help uh, they, they help make you feel better mentally and physically, but while that's happening, your body can do more rejuvenation on itself. Right. Light exercise, really good thing. You know, I'm not gonna, talking about being a sports nut or going to you know work out at the gym every day or anything like that. I'm just talking about really personal light exercise. You know, a little yoga or um, hey, just stretching, body movements. Uh, uh, Damas talks about free form uh, body movements. In other words, uh, find an um, open, clear space. You maybe even put on a little music. Close your eyes and let your body move itself. In other words, don't try to direct it to go in a certain place. And you'll be amazed at how the, the body, you know, maybe it just lifts one leg up or... Um, you know, has you take a certain kind of position, uh, and, and it's it's doing that to kind of say, okay, here's where we need some energy work today. It's too easy to deny your body. Absolutely. Other thing is uh, water. Um, it, it's really good to drink lots of water. That helps flush out a lot of stuff that's in the body. And it also, uh, Adama says that even you know, bathing or showering, being around water is really good. It, it helps to kind of balance some of these. So anything to do with water, whether you're drinking it or whether you're bathing in it, is really huh. good. Try to convince a Pisces of that. Yeah, well, yeah, you, <laughs> you love water. And uh, we live up here in the mountains. It's beautiful, but it's pretty dry. And, and Linda's always kind of saying, oh, let's get to the water somehow. Well, you know, I, I noticed that it truly helps me move energies. It, right. it just does. And, and there's no coincidence that water's above flow. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the other thing is nature. Now, I, I, we live in nature up here in the Colorado mountains, uh, so it's always accessible. But even if there's a park near you, uh, even if you have to just drive out of town and, and find a nice place, but nature, you know, you get that sunlight, which is really good. Really good for your for your um, oh I, I forget what it's called now but that thing that kind of regulates your uh, the way you bring in energy um, nature also just being in the in the forest or even a desert desert is nature it kind of helps clear the mind it rejuvenates the body it gets you more and more grounded and. <laughs> Linda, you just scared that crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't trying. <laughs> we're, we're, I'm focused on my uh, my laptop and what I'm talking about here. And uh, my back turned to Linda's on the other side of the room. And suddenly, there's an entity in front of me. <laughs> Linda walking over to point to my computer screen to say that, uh, Jeffrey, you've got about eight minutes left. But, whew, 
Boy, that brought me right back down to earth. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Here we're talking about spooks, and you know, suddenly, boom. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I didn't hear you walk up behind me. Anyway, that was funny. I think Adamus is really laughing right now. Okay, anyway, walk in nature. It keeps you from getting scared when somebody walks up behind you. <laughs> breathing. Breathing gets you. And by the way, dear, thank you for reminding me. I'm just kind of going off on a rant here. I'm um, really enjoying it. Oh, are you really? Yeah, I'm loving your clarity. Oh, good, good. Uh, well, that that helps when you have a very limited amount of time. You know, on some of the shows we do, we have... I kind of ramble because we have a lot of time. But here we're compressing it. We're getting it in in an hour. Okay, next thing, breathing, breathing, conscious breath. Linda, you love the conscious breath, don't you? I I truly love it because it absolutely, when you're doing the conscious breath, you absolutely are acknowledging the now moment. And and by everything that we work with, the now moment is where the absolute best potentials um, are allowed to to be there. Absolutely. And breathing is really good. It literally brings in energy into your body life force energy and it literally clears out energies that are ready to be released it gets you very present when you're breathing you're very present the other thing i like about breathing is that it's hard to be mental absolutely it's hard to be mental when you're breathing now so many of us we get so analytical and so mental and we're always and i'm talking about myself analyzing and you know and when you take a good deep breath it's very very difficult to be thinking about things now you're suddenly being you're in life you're not you're not thinking about life you're actually doing it so the breathing is wonderful from that respect and then one more on these little tips. And, and by the way, these, well, I get two more actually. These tips really do work. Don't, don't force them, just play with them. Don't create them as a discipline in your life, just have fun with them. The next one is smiling. Smiling. It's, I like this one because, you know, I can be having, I gotta wake up in the morning sometimes thinking, oh, geez, I got a lot to do today, or, uh, you know, da da da. And, I really have been working on just smiling before I ever get out of bed. You know, it changes my entire perspective. It really does. And it just changes the way my body feels. And suddenly it causes me to kind of laugh and say, you know, what a great day. Yeah, I got a lot of things to do, but whoa, I'm going to get them done. So a smile, it, it just smiling to yourself. Don't, don't walk down the street smiling too big. They'll wonder about you. But just smile to yourself. It's great. I, I know, Linda, you do that sometimes. Well, you know, I, it, it makes a huge difference. And, and we've, we've talked about that, and you can really see the effect. And it's stunning the way um, people receive that. Well, yeah, and you really put it into a practical uh, application about a week or so ago. You, you went back home to visit your family. And... <laughs> And, uh, well, no, it, it was under some difficult circumstances, some some you know, family challenges. And uh, I, I talked to you on the phone one night while you were gone, and I was kind of feeling bad because I knew you were in the middle of uh, you know, some rough energies. And I said, so how are you handling it? And you, you said kind of almost, I could feel you gritting your teeth, going, I'm just keep smiling. <laughs> it keeps me, it works. It keeps me sane. And, it and works. It really does work. And... You know, you radiate it to yourself, but you're also radiating it to other people. And, you know, when you walk in smiling, so many times, you know, let's say the energy in the room is dead or just, you know, kind of low. You walk in smiling, watch how it really just changes the energy in the room. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, geez. Oh, I got six minutes left. What happens to time? Oh, I don't know, but I I really enjoyed listening to and your clarity about what, you know, what we, what we're all experiencing and, and the potentials in living well, I want to talk about one more thing. Now, and this is probably the most important thing. So you got all these energies coming in. Boom, they're rolling in all over the place. You, you, now, and, and as I mentioned before, this is the best time this year to, to do something, to you know, create something, do something. But it's also very important to make a choice. Don't, don't just... You know, don't just like be in that river of life, you know, going with the current, getting bashed against the rocks and just following mass consciousness. If you make a choice, the river will serve you rather than you just flowing with the river. So making a choice literally attracts energy to serve you. 
When you make a clear choice, it literally calls out to that energy and says, I'm ready, come on in. Making a clear choice is important. Actually, Adamus has us, you know, those people in the Crimson Circle, write it down five words or less. And you gotta be, he says five words or four words, actually, four words or less. And, you know, not that the energy needs to hear it, but you need to be clear about it. You want to be the driver, not the passenger in the car. Absolutely. So the other thing that's now, and again, we could do a whole section about this, uh, and maybe we will, but there's a huge difference between focusing on manifestations Mm -hmm. versus focusing on true, what I call soul choices. That's a topic in itself. So many times you ask somebody, well, what's your choice? Well, I want more money. I want the um, aches and pains in my back to go away. I want to look younger. And I want to attract somebody into my life, you know, a a relationship. To me, those are manifestations. Yeah. Those are not really choices. And so oftentimes it doesn't work when people make those quote-unquote choices because actually those should come as the result of, of soul choices. Well, they're comfort specific, not necessarily soul specific. Exactly. They're, they're in their human centric rather than right. uh, soulful choices. Right. So a lot of times immediately when people make choices, they say, oh, you know, I, I want more abundance. You know, that's how they, they disguise, you know, the wanting more money. I want more abundance uh, or more health. Well, stop for a moment. Those, those will naturally manifest. Those will naturally show up when you feel and you make choices on a soul level. Now you say, well, so what's a soul level choice? Well, they're more conceptual. And I think we're, we will have to do a choice or a show about this. Um, they're more conceptual. They're more soulful. Now, let me give you a, a few possibilities, for instance. Now, Adamus does a little thing in the workshop where he runs around and asks everybody what their choices is, are. And they basically, he says, no. He said, if, if it was me, I would choose, I would choose clarity. And the whole audience, they, they get that, you know, WTF look, you know, what the, what's that for look? And he says, clarity. Because if you choose clarity, you're going to start being more aware of things. You're going to start being more aware of cause and effect. You're going to start being aware of your, your literally, you know, what, how you're manifesting. You're going to be more aware of your consciousness. It eliminates a lot of doubt and it creates more trust. Yeah. No, to me, that's a good soul level choice. Mm-hmm. I, I choose clarity for this year. Yeah, I love that Suddenly one. you start getting a lot more clear about what's happening, about who you are, about what you're doing here. So I, I love that one because it's so simple. Uh, the Another good example of a soul choice would be um, awareness, kind of kind of similar to right. clarity, but awareness. Awareness isn't just what you perceive through your physical senses. It's awareness on a very heartfelt level, awareness right. of energies and feelings and, and awareness of yourself and how, how, why you're here right now, those type of things. Awareness can change your response to everything because it creates a whole completely different perspective. And when, when you gain that perspective, then it's much, it, it's amazing to me at how much what you do flows with that. So Linda, I'm, I'm just, I can't believe that um, 58 minutes has gone by. Oops. Let's do, let's do a show um, uh, on Awakening Zone, which is our uh, international radio right. network for, for Awakening Consciousness. Let's do a show on Awakening Zone. We'll announce it on Crimson Circle and on Awakening Zone. Okay. And let's do it about choices. I think that would be an amazing show to do. It probably would be about a month before we can do it. Okay. And uh, we'll announce it. Uh, if you send us an email, we'll make sure to send you an announcement or, or go to the Crimson Circle website, www.crimsoncircle.com, or go to the Awakening Zone. That's awakeningzone.com. Look under Linda's My Show, and we'll schedule it uh, for the, it'll be towards the end of February, I believe. One last quickie. Sure. I think listening to this too, uh, we try not to be overly promotional. In fact, we try not to be promotional, but in July, July 23rd, 24th, and 25th, we're doing Dreamwalker Live in Estes Park. And a lot of these, a lot of this feeling into this and experiencing this will be focused on at Estes Park in July. 
So uh, we've got just a few seconds to wrap up, literally. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to any questions. Uh, we, we will try to do that with our next show, and I sincerely apologize. I, I got to talking, and I got so excited. We didn't get time to get to questions. So um, a couple of things. First of all, our website is www.crimsoncircle.com. There you can find tons of free information, good information, and we'll also post information about this show where we're going to talk about soul choices. Uh, or email us at speak.angels, speak.angels at gmail.com if you want us to notify you about that show where we'll talk about soul choices. And also, don't forget... And that, put in the subject, soul choice. Right, right, right. Good idea. Soul choice. Uh, and uh, that's speak.angels at gmail.com. Uh, and also, uh, while we're talking about it, if you, we do have this free book, the Creator Series by Tobias. It's about 200 pages, profound information. And that's available at www.crimsoncircle.com forward slash free free like free you don't have to pay anything for it <laughs> so linda any any closing words no i think that they're going to close us down because we are now past seven we are past seven so thank you listeners all around the world you're truly appreciated we really we really appreciate and love you guys all over the world and and uh, we're having an, an amazing time walking this beautiful path right alongside with you we're all learning together we're all growing together we're all radiating our light uh, to the world and to the cosmos together. And be the divine human that you are. So thank you for being here tonight. Unfortunately, there's no way we can play any outro music, so I'm just going to hum a little bit as we conclude uh -oh. this session of Global Talent Class. Once again, thanks to Global Talent Class, Hilton Johnson, for sponsoring this and for letting us get in touch with you. Thank you all. The show's done. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>